And just 49 days until the new Premier League season. The fans know the fixtures and now the players are heading back for pre-season. For Leicester City, it'll be Craig Shakespeare leading the side. After Claudio Ranieri's sacking, he took them to a 12th placed finish and now he's been appointed on a permanent basis. And here to talk a little bit more about Leicester is a player who's looking to break into the first team this season. Josh Gordon is in the studio with his intermediary, Mustafa Mahmoud, to tell us his story and why he's being compared to Jamie Vardy. Mm -hmm. uh, really good to see you both. Um, Josh, first, tell us a little bit how you got involved with Leicester and how you came about signing for them. Well, I started in October with Mustafa Rangers, just as I finished university. And then I, I got into Mustafa saying that I want to get full-time football now. That's my main focus. Scoring goals at Stafford, scored at 11 and 16, I think it was. So I was doing well, also contributing to, for other people to score. And then it came to January, February time. A few clubs coming in for me, Championship in League One. And I must have was saying, just take your time, we'll, something big will come, just keep going. And then got a phone call while I was at work saying that Leicester City come in for me. So the following week I went on trial and then at the end of the week, they said that they wanted me, so it's been there ever since. Brilliant. You've had yeah. quite an unusual path into, into football as well, haven't you? Quite yeah. different from a lot of players. Yeah. Um, I was at Stoke City when I was younger. I uh, got released just as I finished school. So then I ended up going to college. My f uh, family gave me advice saying, get, go to college, get an education, and then do your football on the side and something will come. So while I was at... At college, I went to university. Then I went into non-league from a young age, from 17, I think it was. And then played non-league for a couple of years. And then now it's come to this, yeah. Uh, Mustafa, how long have you been working with Josh and, and how have you been involved in his progress? Uh, well, Josh finished university and he wanted to pursue a full-time uh, footballing career. So, uh, you know, we have, we've got a network of scouts who had scouted and watched him. And, uh, you know, I spoke to him and he was quite driven and passionate and where he wanted to be. And given uh, my past experiences with moving players from non-league up the ranks um, and speaking to Josh and, you know, seeing his desire to, and, and obviously his, his qualities, um, we, we started working together in October. And um, there was a number of uh, football league clubs uh, looking at Josh and championship clubs, monitoring him. And he really gave us uh, you know, a good impetus to work with because he was scoring goals every week. You know, he was assisting those scoring. So there was a lot of momentum around him and it just made my job you know, a little easier. So um, then I, I spoke to Leicester City and asked them to go and look at Josh and they watched him and they liked what they saw and they invited him down on trial. So he went down there. And uh, it can be quite daunting for players going from you know non-league background to Premier League champions. Mm. Uh, so the day before he went in, uh, I travelled up and met Josh, and uh, there was a game on for the Inter 23s, um, Arsenal against Leicester. So I introduced him to the staff there, uh, and also players who have who I, who I know and have got uh, and I look after at Leicester City. And Josh, uh, we had a couple of test runs to go to the training ground and uh, the stadium, so he knew where he was going. So give him the best possible chance to go in, you know quite relaxed and comfortable and not be daunted on his first day and he, he trained with the first team on the first day we went into uh, Leicester City. So, yeah. This is a massive leap, isn't it, from Stafford to the Premier League. This is very exciting. I mean, how hopeful are you of kind of breaking into the first team over the next 12 months or so? Well, I believe in my own ability and obviously I wouldn't be here if I, if I couldn't. So it's just about working hard every day and training now and hopefully catching Craig Shakespeare's eye. And going from there, just got to learn each day, progress and get better. And it, it, it will come, I'm mm. sure it will come. How old are you? 22. OK, so, so it is a bit of a Jamie Vardy story, a little bit, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I've, I've had a lot of people say that to me. I've had it on the paper as well, saying that in the next Jamie Vardy, which is a good, a good comparison, because the things that he's done is fantastic. 
but I'd also like to make my own mark in the Premier League as well, hopefully, and be me, be Josh Gordon. Yeah. Yeah. I was say, we'll get the Josh Gordon story, yeah. maybe a, a season or two, perhaps. Yeah. But uh, Mustafa, what is it like working with, with non-league players? There must be a lot of challenges involved with it, because obviously, as Josh has said, you know, he's at university, someone working as well as combining their football, uh, football as well. So, so what is it like? How different is it? to working with completely professional footballers? I work with both professional and non-league, but personally for me, there's nothing better than seeing someone rise and um, come from you know, uh, a semi-pro background and see them grow basically and go to a professional ranks. That gives me a huge uh, satisfaction. So uh, in terms of logistics, it can be quite difficult because you have players who need to take time off work to get a trial and they have to you have to speak to the employer and try and get time off to go on trial. And that's not always easy. Um, they've also got other demands as well because they could be working um, and then playing two, two games a week so they could get, get up in the morning and go to work and then they've got to travel somewhere and play on a Tuesday night you know, and, and work on, on the weekends as well. So there are some logistical uh, issues there as well also but I do find non-league players have a lot of drive and, and desire and passion to, to try and make it because they're putting the effort in playing football and earning a living elsewhere and uh, it gives them a good grounding and DNA, something which is a lot different to uh, some players that I do come across in the professional ranks, you know, who ha might have had it as easy or easier than, than non-league players. Yeah, you mentioned non-league. Josh, you played against uh, Cohen Bramall, who went from non-league to Arsenal. Um, what do you make of his talent? I used to play with Cohen first before I played against him. We both at Newcastle Town together. And he's always been a good player, he's fast, he's athletic. So when I found out he was at Arsenal, yeah, I, was, I was so chuffed for him. And then I saw him uh, one game against Hensford, who we used to play for. And after the game, he came up to me, he's telling me what's going on. And he's saying, this is your turn now, you need to make it. And he just gives you that extra drive and seeing your friends do it and now. You might uh, be playing against him next yeah. season. Hopefully, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that certainly would be a story, wouldn't it? And, and Mustafa, how difficult is it to sort of keep players feet on the ground if you like you know if they've come from non-league suddenly into the Premier League all the trappings that come with that how big a role will you have still nurturing Josh I think with Josh it's, it's not an issue he's so humble and down to earth he still goes and watches Stafford play you know he still uh, hangs around with the same friends he's not changed at all a lot's to do with upbringing and you know your family environment and you know myself personally I only really work with players who are quite humble and, and down to earth because otherwise it gets hard work, to be honest with you. So with Josh, it's a dream. So, you know, it's, 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 not, it's not difficult at all. And um, he's quite modest in, in what he's achieved and um, he doesn't really show off. So, yeah, it's, 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 it makes a change. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're going to be looking out for Josh. And Josh, you're going to stay with us, aren't you, in the next couple of moments. Yeah. We're going to be looking a little bit more at your progress and what might happen with Leicester over the uh, next few months in the new Premier League season. And coming up in the next couple of moments, we'll also tell you what's been going on at Lords, where Sorry have set Nottinghamshire the total of 298 to win the final of the One Day Cup. But Jay Dernbach lost his wicket in the final over of the innings. More from Lords coming up soon. This is Sports Saturday. We're counting down to the start of the Premier League season. Leicester's Josh Gordon is with us and he's hoping to make a breakthrough to the first team this year after moving from non-league to the Premier League. Josh, we touched on it before, but I guess the obvious comparison to your story is Jamie Vardy and how he came up through the non-league. How much of an inspiration is he to you? He's a massive inspiration, obviously, like you just said, him coming through the same ranks and doing what he's achieved is fantastic. So to do Half of what he's done would be, would be a great achievement. But obviously, I would like to do my own thing and get my own name out there. Mm. Yeah. yeah. So Josh Gordon, that is the name we want to be hearing yeah. in, a, in a season or two, let's yeah, say. Yeah, hopefully. Uh, tell us about what kind of forward you are. Are you similar to Jamie Vardy? I would say I'm similar to um, how he is. He's fast. He's also a good goal scorer. And you can tell when he's on the pitch, he's hungry. And that's what... I am. I'm hungry as well. I like to get around the pitch, work hard for the team. So there's similar traits there, yeah. which is good. Similar traits, which is good. Um, let's have a look at some of the goals that you've scored for the under-23s to see what we might have to look forward to uh, in, in the Premier League. And, and talk us about some of these goals that you've scored and how important they've been to you. Well, when we played against Tottenham, it was important for the team altogether because we had to try to stay up. Um, in, in, the, in the first division. So to score 
in a, go a game what means meant so much was an honour, and also showing that I was a good signing, and that was I'm able to do it at that, that level, coming from such a lower level and being able to score. And the few games I've been there was also good as well. Yeah, so that's helped you to sort of settle in, I guess. Yeah. So that's very important for you to be getting on that score sheet very early on. Yeah. Um, what was it like, tell us, when you first walked in to Leicester, once you'd signed that deal and you knew you were going to be a Leicester player, what was that like for you? It's, it's a memory I'll always, always remember. Going to the training ground, the facilities are fantastic there. And then as I walk in, you see in the likes of Jamie Vardy, Danny Drinkwater and people like that, just walking past, saying hello. It's, it's, it's a fantastic feeling. Mm. And going in at a time when the club were still the Premier League champions, yeah. it must have had a real, a real buzz around the place. It did, yeah. Everyone's nice and friendly. When the first day I was there, I had to train with the first team, and Craig Shakespeare spoke to me. He was, he was uh, welcoming, and it's just had a nice aura about the club, and it just made me feel like at home. Yeah. And you said about, you know, that memory's going to stay with you for a long time when you walked in there for the first time, but tell us about the difference from walking into Leicester's training ground to what you'd been through previously in other training grounds and other football clubs? It's completely different. Yeah. Going from pitches which I hardly got any grass on to pitches what an immaculate. And it's, it's hard to describe how, how amazing it feels to be so privileged to train on them pitches and have the facilities and the coaches and all the backroom staff there to help you to progress. It's a massive difference. Uh, and you mentioned Craig Shakespeare, that you've had a little chat with him. Has, have you spoken to him more about your future role at the club? Um, no, when I'm there, he speaks to me when I'm training with him. He gives me loads of advice and helps me to progress. He gives me a lot of uh, good feedback. And he watched me against uh, Tottenham as well. And now it's just basically going back there and trying to catch his eye and hopefully, hopefully get me into that first team or in the round. And for you, you know, going in... I mean, when do you go back for, for training, let's say? Uh, Monday. So on Monday, it, for you, it's a fresh start. You're going in with everybody as the same. You're an equal to everybody else. Yeah. That's how you see it. it I think the season finished a bit too early for me. Um, but I, I got chosen to go to Hong Kong with the under-23s in the City Sevens. And we won that. And I've not really had a break. I've just continued to keep fit and train just so I'm ready for the first, uh, for the first day back. Yeah. Uh, now, Josh, obviously, as you've been speaking, we've been watching it, this very interesting bit of training, um, hopping, it seemed to be. <laughs> uh, it's caught, it caught my eye. What on earth's going on there? What, what is this? What are you doing here? <laughs> um, at the end of the season, I was talking to my agents, um, saying how I want to improve myself. And one of my main um, aspects of my game is my speed. And we wanted to uh, just improve that. And my agents got onto the phone to... Um, a coach called Earl, who also used to be a runner. He's run with um, Linford Christie. He trained Darren Campbell. And he was just doing some plyometric training there, just to get your technique right and try to, uh, to make it better when you come to, onto the pitch. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, very yeah, interesting. Okay. Um, you say you're returning to training on Monday, but how have your sort of off season been? Have you still been keeping yourself fit and? Raring, you know, getting yourself ready in shape for Monday. Yeah, like I said before, the season finished too early for me, so I didn't want to slack off. I had a little break after I come back from Hong Kong, but then I'd just been doing some one-to-one -one training with someone around my uh, local to me, just to make sure I'm, I'm at least the same um, level I was before, or maybe higher. Mm. And just training every day, just keeping in that habit of that routine. Sorry, of training. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm sure your, your target this season is to break into that first team, but looking beyond that, what are you targeting? Everyone wants to say get into that first team, but I just take every day as it comes, just try to improve as, as I keep going, and you never know to see, to see what happens. Uh, and what about Leicester? What do you think their target should be for this coming season? Well, we had a bit of a rocky season last, last year, but then we started hitting form towards the end, so it's just trying to take that into next season and just get as high as we can, not just for the fans, but the club as well. Yeah. Goodness, exciting times yeah. for you, Josh. We do appreciate you coming in. And uh, as we were saying, we've always talked about the Jamie Vardy story, but maybe it's going to be the Josh Gordon story next Let's for everybody so. else. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you.